Before we begin this video, we just want to speak about our new partnership with the mobile sports app called Locker. Locker is a new sports app whose mission it is to centralise premium sports content and put the power in the hands of fans to personalise their world of sport from sources they love and trust. It's recently launched and is available in UK and Irish app stores. It's free to download and it's great for football fans. So ahead of the internationals, give it a download and let us know what you think. We will be announcing more about this partnership in the coming weeks. But you can go, you can list your favourite club, whether it's in the Premier League, whether it's in the Scottish League, whether it's in League of Ireland. And you can have all your stuff listed in a feed designated to you and you can get push notifications as well to your club. So check it out, it's free to download and the link is in the bio. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be here in the Aviva Stadium with St. Pat's attacker, Chris Forrester. We're here at the launch of FIFA 23. It's out, when's it out? Early access, man? Uh, I think it's the 27th, yeah. Okay, well it's supposed to be out on the, on the 30th unless you're Chris and you have early access. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I suppose talk to me about the game. Are you, are you much of a gamer? Do you play it? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I love FIFA. I've always loved FIFA. Ever since I was really young. I remember playing like FIFA 98 and all. I played that. That was my yeah, first one as I well. I remember playing it with that. Roberto uh, Carlos and all. Yeah, the it's boys. crazy. That's 98, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah and uh, yeah, I've, every year since it's come out, I've always been either queuing up in town at 12 o'clock lunch or doing something like this and hopefully getting a free copy of it. Uh, but yeah, no, FIFA's been, been a massive part of my life, especially then ever since I come on to the game. I, I always make sure I'm, I'm always getting out signing myself for a Barcelona or something. And how, how does that go for you? Do you? Can you actually build your player up to, to get into the demons? Yeah, you can do training sessions and stuff on it, which is only new features, I think, in it. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter whether I'm brutal or not, I'm still playing. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Messi. <laughs> Probably not, well, if you can, you might as well. I'm sure a lot of people who, who uh, can would as well. But uh, talk to me about. This season it's been a bit mixed. I suppose the start of the season wasn't wasn't much as what would have wanted. Um, you had a new manager coming in, and um, obviously the European football that seemed to kind of turn things in a, in a more positive manner. And now you seem to be going well. So kind of from from your point of view, how, how's the season been? Yeah, I think it's it's been like you said, it's been a mixed kind of season. Um, at times I think we've let ourselves down in, in our performances, and at times I think we've been really good. Um, I think that was just to be expected with a new team and you know it's a whole new setup at the club. Um like and like you said, the European games then kinda of gave us that that extra bit of confidence in ourselves and you know, we bonded a little bit more over throughout them games. Um so yeah, it's been a mixed season but I think we're going progressively in the right direction. Um so it's it's promising, yeah. Mm, maybe maybe you know you touched on there just kinda of the fact that you're bonding more, maybe the new signings kinda of coming in and actually spending that mo that more of that time together which is on the road maybe in hotel rooms and stuff like that to kind yeah. of get used to each other maybe that helped them kind of settle in because they've done well since they've come in anyway yeah a lot of them have to be fair um they've all been great additions to the team and like you said when you're on, on them european games and you know you're sitting on buses for three or three hours with the lads and you probably just start talking to someone that you don't really talk to as much on the team and you get to know them a bit more and you know i think that's how a team is really created and then you get to know someone You'll, you'll do the extra bit for each other. Um, but yeah, uh, the new lads that have come in have all been great additions. Toys, everyone that's come in has been, has been really pushing us all. And I think that's great as well. The competition in the squad now for positions is is really healthy and it's it's pushing us in the right direction. Mm, you know, I just kind of go back to the to the game in Tala and just the European adventure. I mean, f from, from your own point, point of view, it must have been great to be able to play in those games, but also very frustrating at like the game in Tala. In my opinion, you were robbed and a lot of decisions went the wrong way. I mean, I, I was kind of sitting in this general direction from the pitch in Tala and the fella who got fouled, yeah. um, you know, went down. You, you, like, you flicked the ball through his legs and then the ref gives it, it goes up the end penalty. You know, and it, it must be very frustrating because he's put so much into those games and then yeah. before you know it, the, the European adventure is over and I don't really want to go back into that because it's probably not a good memory but you know yeah, it, it must yeah, I think you're, you're right in what you're saying you know that wasn't a foul there was a lot of stuff in the game that wasn't handled properly by the, by the referee and I think he was a bit all over the place to be honest um, yeah and you know we left everything out there and you know for us to be done like that I think was a bit upsetting for us but you know that's that's what you kind of get in these European games. Your referees are from obviously foreign countries, um, so you never really know what you're going to get. 
kind of just have to look after yourself and you know hopefully that the referees have a good job or do a good job I suppose uh, I suppose well you know that game was a, it was very upsetting because I do think we were the better team and you know they they kind of annoyed us as well to be fair I don't think they were really really good people yeah. at their club you can see that by the end like, of yeah. the game anyway we won't, we won't really go into that but yeah. uh, keep you out of trouble but um, <laughs> yeah, true. I think just with you know I remember I was in the press conference after the the, the first game um, the team's from Slovakia mm-hmm. Mura, Mura, wasn't it? From Slovenia, and he was yeah. saying you know, they thought they would just turn up and they'd beat you type yeah. thing. so it was nice to kind of give them a smack in the face and be like you know we're here and just to see a League of Ireland club you know going yeah. to, to other places in Europe and winning games and, and putting it up to teams and showing what they can do you've seen Shamrock Rovers are now doing it in, in the Europa Conference League as well so mm. I suppose it's, it's good in that sense to kind of see that he can compete I'm sure you probably had no doubt in that but yeah, no other people to see because you see a lot of the teams it's good to go and represent the, the league and yeah. you know to get these kind of little wins and you know to be undermined every every country you kind of go they're like oh it's only an Irish team we'll, we'll, we'll beat these you know you've seen it with the Sligo games uh Scottish teams thinking they can just come and beat them. Us as well, I think more that they thought, ah, oh, it's only an Irish team, and we'll come over, we'll, we'll just pop them off the pitch, and, you know, like I said, clearly wasn't the case. Um, so, yeah, it's always nice to be on the mind and underdog, be the underdog like that, because that's that kind of gives you more fuel, you know, to go and, you know, I'm going to go shut these up now, they, they think they're better than us. And fair enough, they're better than us they are, but you know, there's no need to be disrespectful. I always feel like Irish teams get disrespected uh, going to European games. Mm, with that under- underdog thing, kind of, I was just here with Gary Deegan from Draw a few minutes ago, he was saying the same thing. Like, sometimes that kind of spurs you on in games, but just to not keep you too long here, um, just on your own case this season, you've shown glimpses of, of, of being at your best at times. Um, yeah. I haven't been at that many St. Pat's games to. to <coughs> You talk about your your overall performances in general, but just kind of looking at the season as a whole, how would you personally? How would you like to finish the season as as a club? You know, what's um, um, as a, as personally for me, I want to. I you know, I've been hitting a bit of form lately with goals, and you know, I want to continue that. Um, as a club, I think we just want to keep pushing up up the table. You know, we're in the, we're in a really good position. Momentum's with us. Um, we have massive games coming up, so we'll, we'll want to go into them games and you know give a good account of ourselves. And you know, I think our league position at the moment, I think we're a lot better than where we are, um, and we're still kind of in the progress of, of building. And um, so, yeah, as a club, we want to be going getting them towards second or spots uh, European automatically. Uh, so, yeah, it's just to keep on progressing. Yeah, I suppose the key is from that last season because under Stephen O'Donnell, you know, it was a really good side built, and then kind of a bit of the heart of that was taken out, and then you kind of lost your keeper there as well during um, the transfer window. You need to bring in another one, and it's just kind of been, you know, it's the classic case with League of Ireland clubs. You can never yeah. get that consistency, which is a shame because I think if, if a couple of clubs got players with consistency. You know, you'd start seeing maybe a bit more European football yeah. and, and doing well in that sense. But you're always kind of rebuilding and new sides. And you know, Bowes are doing it continuously year on year, losing a lot of their bigger players. Pats did lose a lot of, you know, players gone gone away and gone abroad and stuff like that. You know, James yeah. Bank was going playing with Udinese, who are sitting top of Serie A now. I know he's not yeah. playing, but he's on the so bench for the week. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I suppose in some ways you're you kind of seeing that in a positive way that players are going abroad and doing well or, or what way would you like to stay, see them stay for longer maybe uh, you know I think some people go away well, very course, early yeah. and the the you know they, they're not really ready I think with the lads they've had a good bit of experience at men's football and then they've obviously went but I've seen people go away a bit too early like in my case I went away when I played I think nearly three and a half years at Pats a year at Bowes um, before I'd gone so I'd, I knew the game and I knew how to carry myself a bit more, I'd matured a bit more. So um, it's a good thing that, everyone, that the players are going, they're getting opportunities to go better their career. Uh, no doubt about that. But you know, I think it's it's time sensitive, and you know, you don't want to really rush into these things. Mm. In my own opinion, as a fan of the league, of world, I'd like to see them go for higher prices, which yeah, it is, absolutely, it is yeah. as well, you especially know. for the clubs as well that have you know built them up to be the player that they are and giving them an opportunity in, in senior football. Yeah, so absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think it's a bit of a crying shame. Like I don't know what your opinion is on kind of the levels of like League One to, to the Premier Division and stuff like that. But mm. I think you know 
I see like league of Ireland clubs, Swedish clubs. Like I think it's Zach Elbizetti who's playing AIK, and I, yeah. I remember Rovers played them a few seasons ago and Bethlehem in Europe and stuff like that. So just look, it's not that much difference. It's just maybe facilities. It's probably yeah, the only massive thing. Massive difference in, in like what what facilities are available, especially like at League One and at Peterborough, the facilities that were available were much better than what's available here. I know now Rovers have a good little training ground. And I think every team is trying to work towards better facilities, which is which is positive. Um, and then maybe that can be the reason why players will stay that extra bit longer and you know probably gain that extra bit of value. Um, but it's something that I think the league will need to look at, and you know clubs that need to look at improving the facilities. Mm, I think it helps when players like yourself will be like a leading figure within the league. You know, kind of comes out and say it, say it. You know, yeah. and I know Damien Duff has said it as well. You know, yeah, he's not yeah. a player, but. He carries a lot of weight within, you know, mm. Irish football. Just kind of what he's achieved as a player and, and now he's achieving as a manager. But listen, Chris, um, I hope you enjoy the the launch of FIFA. I might even uh, play. I don't know what what console you on. I'm on PS4. Ah, sure, I'm not on that level yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on PS4 still. So, but Good anyway, um, I wish you the best of luck. Enjoy Appreciate playing as yourself. Me. And uh, thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you.